Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. I am here today in a prospector because I want to have a quick look at the sort of mining gameplay again in 3.6.1. We are in the PTU. I think the last time I looked at it sort of like in a very basic gameplay loop was 3.2.1 which was many quarters ago. Um, so mining can be done just by the prospector currently. We know we're going to have the ability to do it um, in other ships as well. We'll be able to mine fuel effectively with the Starfarer. We'll be able to mine ship's hulls um, in this like salvage mechanics with the uh, Reclaimer and with the Vulture when the Vulture's in game. We're going to get the Orion for mining as well, which is more of a strip miner. This Prospector is for small scale mining and it can be used in asteroid fields like the yellow asteroid field that I'm in at the moment, which we could um, uh, be looking for asteroids here. But we're going to go uh, moonside and we'll look at mining on the ground because it looks prettier, in my opinion. It's just a bit of a grey wasteland at the moment in space. But uh, mining, some of the gameplay mechanics have changed, at least in the way that you're sort of like discovering stuff. And I just wanted to talk about mining in general. So we have turned up at Daymar to do some mining. It is my favourite moon. I think it probably will remain my favourite moon until some crazy, crazy, beautiful moons um, start turning up. This... Uh, bah, 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 bah. Go to the Dunlo Dun Ridge Age Shelter. Basically, we'll just go near one of the major points of interest that's in the light, so we can actually see what we're doing. And we will scan for some mineables, uh, and then we'll norm them up, and I'll go through all the sort of like the basics um, of mining, how it sort of stands at the moment. So we are moving towards having more mining mechanics in the game. They're going to keep on iterating on these systems quite a lot. We will have sort of like mining for fuel with the Starfarer. We will have mining with the Orion, the massive strip mining ship um, uh, and that sort of stuff as well. And there might be some other ships that allow for mining or modules that allow for mining like on the Caterpillar, things like that. So we're just going to get reasonably close to the grounds. And the new hover mode does make some of the mining a bit more difficult. However, we will go through some of the tips that other people have taught me um, for this. Um, because there's some ways you can make landing on hover mode a lot more simple that I didn't realise until a couple of people told me. Um, but it's it's pretty simple gameplay loop mining at the moment. Uh, although it's, it's, uh, it's reasonably polished. Uh, so we, the first thing we're going to be doing is scanning for something mineable. So we'll press tab, and we'll hold right click, we'll release right click, and that will send a little scanning pulse down uh, to the planet. So we haven't had much luck actually finding any mineables at the moment, and we could go look um, right next to a point of interest. Typically near uh, like craters and things as well. Oh! So over here, we have detected something. Hopefully, it's it's a mineable and not an enemy, not like a ballista um, that will just fire a missile at us. Oh, 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 we have found mineables. So, with the new sort of like way they spawn uh, rocks and mineables in, these will be clustered together, which makes mining uh, significantly more easy. Um, also, rocks typically have similar sort of like uh, compositions to each other that are clustered near each other, um, or at least similarities with each other. Uh, and we'll be able to break different bits off these rocks uh, and nom up the ones that we want. Now, we're not going to be super, super efficient when it comes to exactly what we're going to be extracting. Go into first person. So what I was uh, taught recently is that, obviously with hover mode, if I pitch downwards, I'll fly forward because I'm a helicopter. Now, I'm not a massive fan of hover mode at the moment, but if you press right shift, um, it will lock your ability to pitch up and down. Um, I can still move my, my gimbal um, around, so if I press M, I can go into mining mode now, and I can still move my mining laser and aim it, but I won't be pitching up and down, which is absolutely fantastic. But I can still press control to, to go down and space to go up and, and strafe um, WSAD. Um, so we can have a look at these rocks. Hover over the rock, it will scan it. 
quartz, not massively valuable. We've got diamond, quite valuable, but um, very low percentages of those. Uh, on the left, we can see instability, which basically says how um, quickly a rock will sort of like um, explode when you overcharge it. Uh, and there's resistance, which is sort of how much power um, do I need to maintain uh, or how hard is the rock um, to sort of like get going and, and remain uh, going when, it, when I'm trying to put energy in it. Um, so higher resistances would mean that I'd have to put a lot, a lot more energy uh, effectively in. And some, maybe I'd need two uh, prospectors to come along and um, sort of uh, help with. Uh, so let's have a look at this other rock. So I'm not going to get rich off either of these two rocks, but I can at least show off the mechanics. Uh, so what we're going to do is we press left click and it will toggle on the mining laser. Press M to toggle in and out of mining mode. Um, I'm in fracture mode at the moment and at the bottom left you can see my laser throttle. So if I mouse wheel that up and we're trying to get the rock energy level into that little green area. Um, and you can see just after it there is a, a red area as well. So... I'm going to go up to 100% and see if it actually makes progress. The progress is pretty slow on that, even at 100%. Um, once we get closer to the sort of like green area, we'll mouse wheel it down. So we'll be on like maybe 80%. To so keep the beam in a single place. We can get closer to the rock, but if we start to overcharge the rock, and even if it, we break it sort of like, um, fracture it like we want, that energy will... Um, transfer to the area around it and can damage and destroy our ship. So sort of bear that in mind. If we overcharge a rock too much, it will explode. Um, if we overcharge a rock a little bit and then fracture a rock normally, it will still explode if the, if the overcharge sort of like energy hasn't dissipated. Um, so sort of bear that in mind. You'll see the rocks start to get cracks in them and sort of like you'll be able to visually see the buildup of energy in them. Um, it's sort of like you can hear it as well to an extent. And the idea here is, is that it's not just going to be your HUD that shows off how close you are to completion or um, how much energy you should be putting in a rock. Right, so we are overcharging that rock as we saw. And you can see the overcharge sensor there um, building up. And if we overcharge a rock too much, it would explode and kill us. So back to my triumphant return to Damar. Uh, hopefully this time we will not blow up the ship is the idea. So with uh, lessons learned from overpowering a rock, paying attention to it, and it's going to be a key. Fantastic. We have stumbled across some mineables. So, one of the things I've, I've found with 3.6.1 and mining at the moment is that when you scan, using the scan thing, it doesn't necessarily give you a sensor blob to where mineables are, um, which is quite annoying. You just passively detect them a lot of the time, and you'll only passively detect them if you're uh, in a prospector, which is any ship you can mine with anyway. So sort of just bear that in mind, um, there, there are still lots of iterations and improvements they need to make to mining. Uh, I am going to, apparently there's a star fairer nearby, um, distance over there. I'm going to press uh, right shift again, and I'm going to literally uh, control downwards. Uh, so I'm strafing down, I'm going to press M again, and we're going to have a quick look at all these rocks. I'm going to nom at least one of them up. Yeah, tiny bit of aluminium. The top right, you can see the actual makeup of those mineables. Nothing great there. Well, that's the best rock there so far, but still not great. And when I was messing around earlier, I found some uh, that's right, I'll, uh, right shift again to get back out of that mode so we can actually move over to this other mineable. It's a bug where the, the sound of the sort of scanning um, stays 
uh, until you turn off mining mode uh, as well. Uh, but earlier I found uh, a rock with 100% gold in. Um, so I was like, oh, that, that's pretty that's pretty useful. What do we got here? As you can see, the, the mine walls are reasonably clustered together. Like, you'll find a good portion of them in the same sort of area. What have we got here? Go on, be something good. Uh, it's not great, but it's got lots of random things in. So we'll break down this rock, uh, and then we will sell our legitimately gotten gains um, at uh, Port Olosar, probably. Because you can you can buy and sell there, or at least sell uh, the sort of like mining, uh, mineables there. In the future, you will both have to buy sort of like the mineable commodities at mining outposts and that sort of stuff as well. Uh, so this time, left click while in fracture mode, let's power up. Uh, our laser somewhat to see what we're doing instability of 0.81 so reasonably unstable but not hugely so resistance is pretty high at 0.61 so we're gonna start off with like around 80 percent 90 percent see what happens going anywhere with that so let's crank all the way up to 100 to start with get reasonably close to the rock this one's gonna be relatively so progression So in the future, we will be able to eject the saddlebags from the prospector. There's plans, so it's got these four saddlebags um, that will be able to individually be ejected and then picked up later by cargo um, uh, haulers or uh, another prospector or whatever. Um, there's going to be ways of filtering out the, the stuff that you don't want in your ship as well. So large percentages of rocks um, you might not want or you, you might not want the, the diamond for some reason. Uh, in your cargo bay, so you can eject that separately is the idea. Lots and lots of iterations uh, for uh, and improvements to mining to come, but they've sort of like tried to improve some of the stats behind things and the, the instability, resistance, the well, the way that these mineables are spawned, where they're spawned, the rocks when they break down will all have the, the correct sort of like makeup based uh, on what you were um, what the main rock that you tried to break down was um, and you can have like a, if you had like a rock that's a 40% gold then a big part of it might be gold uh, when you break it down like you might have a gold chunk you might have a, a, a chunk of it that's diamond uh, for the most part we're just uh, throttling down slightly on the laser so the rock doesn't um, explode because we don't want to put it back into that red area we can see the fracturing sensor there Going all the way up to 100, and then the rock breaks apart. Now, we individually scan the chunks again. And some of them will be more profitable than others. Not a massive fan of the blue-on-blue blue sort of backgrounds here. So let's grab this... This bad boy. So we're going to change what type of mode we're in. Um, once these rocks are consumable, as it were. So basically, if you highlight over a rock and you see an orange outline, that means you need to break the rock down further before uh, you can nom it up. So we're going to fracture this one down a bit further. It should be a bit easier now. So we put like to about 30%, 40%. You'll see the rock energy level climbs a lot more. Instability and resistance are lower um, here. So once we get a bit closer, we are going to mouse wheel down to about 20%. You can see that that's still a bit too much, so maybe down to 15%. See that we're in the rock energy level, we're in that green barrier, but we're still climbing a bit faster than I'd like. Keep it at 14-ish percent, maybe a little tiny bit lower. You can see that fracturing sensor on the right, climbing up to 100%. What we want to break down the rock. Now, if that overcharge sensor had any percentage in at all, when the rock um, broke, the energy could be sent outwards and, and damage our ship. So, you can see that these actually have a purple outline now, these uh, these bits of rock. So, we are going to right-click, go into extraction mode, and we're going to extract the ore. Oh. Nom, nom, nom. Able to see that 
the rock actually has shadows that we're nomming up. The little stream underneath us. Gonna nom all this up. You can see at the bottom right the cargo capacity of our ship. Hover mode is not your friend. Hover mode hates you, but pressing right shift and um, using uh, X um, really, really, really helps it seems. So X is sort of like space break and levels you out and shift stops you from pitching, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Gonna nom up all this rock now. Really as part of the gameplay loop for mining, we should be only extracting uh, the ore that we want um, and actually searching a bit more in depth for like pay dirt rocks so like huge percentages of um, tannerite or uh, tannerite whatever the fuck it's called uh, or uh, gold or whatever um, whatever's a valuable commodity at the time uh, but for purposes of being a bit more simplistic we're just gonna fill up our cargo uh, and then go and sell this stuff at Port Olisar. But in the future, you will be able to jettison all that you don't want. So maybe it will be beneficial to, to norm up all the asteroids and all of the um, rocks. Though in the prospector, it's likely worth your time to uh, spend a bit more time um, and actually getting exactly what you want in your cargo bay. Because it's smaller scale, you're probably able to get some, some better stuff um, if you spend a little bit more time. It's not a strip miner. It's not the Orion. Right, I'm going to reduce this. About 3%, 4%. You can see that the overcharge sensor's got some energy built up, so we might get a little explosion of this rock. Oh, we're good, we're good. It's under a certain threshold, so we're good. Let's see if there's any uh, good amount of diamonds in any of these bad boys. Empty. Not ideal. 6% diamonds. Well, let's norm that up. Just for completionist sake. You can see the literal bits of rock being sucked towards me. Oh, no. Don't know if that's any good. It's in there. A little bit of diamonds. Is that empty, this one? One's empty as well, so we're not this diamonds. I'm gonna get the hell out of dodge. You can see that we're at 100 percent cargo capacity already. Um I'm gonna press right shift to get out of that mode. But we if we kept on searching, we would find more and more mineables, and they are clustered together. And you're likely to find similar resources, similar commodities um near each other on moons and plants and stuff, is the idea. They'd be like, oh, I come to Daymar, that's where they've got uh, Tannerites or, um, uh, or uh, iron or whatever. Um, diamond, in this case. Then let's get that out of atmosphere. Let's uh, go out of mining mode, which puts our little mining beam away. We're on our way back to Port Olisar. But the sort of like ideas behind the future of mining are that you'll be able to sell the data of where you found sort of like mineables if you found a particularly like a lucrative asteroid field or selection of mineables on a planet or a moon or surveyed an area and um, because there is going to be base building where you can build sort of like mining outposts but also just exploit the mineral wealth of, of a planet or a moon or asteroid field with a prospector or other ships but selling that data is obviously a major part of that i suspect the prospectors will literally be useful for prospecting um, th those areas as well and sort of like um, part of their gameplay will be well they might not necessarily want to mine anything but they might want to detect things for mining or a mixture of the two uh, but yeah mining lots and lots more gameplay uh, to go with it looking forward to selling like my mineables at uh, refineries or uh, and that sort of places and being able to buy, I suppose, mineables and, and that sort of stuff from them as well.
Pom call to Port Olsa so we can actually land here. Which is my landing bay. Ah, a nearby one. How useful. The end, put down my landing gear. Or to go into third person. Could hold end to auto land, but we should be alright. There's not being alright. Bam. Nice, nice simple landing. Oh my god. And a, and a little bit of lag there. A little bit of lag. Let's blame it on that. Not my scrub tier gameplay. Well, couldn't be. I landed where it requests where it asked me to land. Uh, snapped me back to an animation because uh, I'd already said I was going to go down the ladder before I jumped, jumped out of it. Um, right, so we're just going to go inside Paul Lasso now and go to the trade console here. So I'm hoping in the future we can properly stockpile resources in our habs and, and hangars. That's the plan at least. And to sell at the, the particular times, we are going to be getting sort of like uh, more of the information of what uh, value resources have um, to like our maybe glasses, but also on sort of like uh, screens, I believe as well. They've got like commodity screens. We're going to go up to one of these, uh, these consoles and we should be able to sell our legitimately gotten gains. From our prospector. Sell to refinery. Bam. Got it. We're able to sell all of our mineables uh, for a very low price, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, if we had really, really, really sort of like looked around and got some, some good ores and stuff, we would have made a, a lot of money. And mining can be quite profitable, but it can also, at the moment, um, not really be worth your time of day if you've got like a combat ship as well because you could just sort of like grind bounty missions which seem to be very profitable and lucrative at the moment cargo hauling is obviously quite good as well um, but if you are willing to go the extra mile with sort of like mining at the moment and um, you get a bit lucky with some of the rocks that you find like get high percentage um, uh, some of the, the, the more lucrative materials um, you, you can make quite a lot of money quite quickly. But as I said, um, there's a lot of money to be made doing bounty hunting as well. So uh, cargo hauling, loads and loads and loads of money to be made doing that. But it's very high risk if there's like a server crash or you lose your ship or you get interdicted or you're smuggling stuff or pirates attack you or a player rams you or something. Um, so sort of bear that in mind. But mining, nice little polished gameplay loop. Pretty simple at the moment. Should get quite a lot better in the future and lots more different types of mining and uh, the, the sort of information trade and um, really hunting down rocks and stuff should all sort of like really add to that gameplay a bit more in the future as well but tell me what you think in the comments below are you excited for what sort of mining might become in the future do you think it's a cool little gameplay loop now do you think it's a bit too boring at the moment do you think yeah it's great but there's nothing to spend your money on so what's the point uh, this sort of like toil work is fine and, and enjoyable if you have something you can actually spend your money on it for like permanent progression because you go and buy ships in game and stuff like that now but you know it's not the not the same it's not permanent progression every three months or so uh, at least you get your sort of like alpha uec and alpha uec purchases wiped at the moment so um, when we have full persistence in the future no more resets it'll be a lot more worthwhile doing some of the more um suppose hands-on but less interesting action-based jobs. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Every month we have a giveaway. For August, we are giving away a Drake Corsair bundled with an 8-inch Fire Tablet and 12 months of Game Glass. Game Glass makes software, allowing you to turn touchscreen devices like tablets and mobiles into immersive controllers for Star Citizen. But not just Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous is getting support next, and there's plans for lots more games to support this. You can use Game Glass for free, but there are paid options as well, giving you even more functionality. Please follow the links um, down below to uh, get more info or to download. I'm still also shilling for NordVPN. If you're looking for a VPN, they are very cheap and have many benefits over free services. They help protect you and your privacy online. 
but it also makes it easier to access various websites as well. And there's Shadow 2, giving you remote access to a Windows 10 gaming PC of your very own so that you can effectively turn any appropriate device, your smartphone, a uh, computer, a laptop, whatever, into this much more beefy machine. Subscription cloud services, in my opinion, are the way forward and for some are going to be very appealing instead of sort of maintaining their own PC. For all of those, please follow the links below or use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. A massive thank you for watching. Please consider liking and sharing this content as well as pressing the bell icon to get informed when a video goes live. Consider Patreon or becoming a YouTube member too if you'd like to further support the channel. Thanks for watching guys. Please take care and I'll see you in the verse.